Webcams come in many shapes, sizes, and prices, but the thing that binds many of them together is that, well, they can be terrible. Looks pretty bad. They are more important to people than ever, but few categories of consumer tech have needed more of an overhaul than the webcam. But that's not to say that all webcams are bad. If you're unhappy with what you've got or you're buying your very first webcam, I'm gonna show you a few good options. Let's start with the $300 Opal C1, a camera that improves on the webcam formula in some big ways. First off, its sleek design and sturdy build materials make it stand out compared to most other models. It also has a good camera sensor. It's actually the same 12 megapixel sensor originally used in Google's first Pixel phone from 2016. When you put it like that, I know it sounds a little long in the tooth, but in the world of webcams, it amounts to a major boost in quality that outpaces any other webcam I've tried. The picture isn't soft and grainy. Good hardware like this is important, but the thing that separates the Opal C1 from the pack is its heavy reliance on software to improve picture quality. As practically all smartphone makers have illustrated, software, along with some machine learning, is crucial for squeezing more out of small camera hardware. In Opal's case, this approach to making a webcam makes it really smart at figuring out the best color accuracy, white balance, exposure, and more, without the need to adjust settings manually. If you're one of those people who likes to manually tweak all the dials, you can do that in Opal's Mac OS app. Oh, and just a heads up for the Windows users out there, Opal says full Windows compatibility won't arrive until late 2022. Back to the Mac OS app. It can enable some cool features in the C1. Its most effective feature is an adjustable bokeh effect that looks softer and far more realistic than the intense blur provided by most video conferencing apps. Some of my Verge colleagues weren't fooled by the simulated bokeh, but hey, what'd you expect? We're tough critics. I think most people will like the way that it looks though. Opal's focus on software and machine learning gives the C1 some other tricks. It has a feature that can keep your face within the frame. Several other webcams at this point can do some version of this, though the face tracking in the C1 is surprisingly responsive. I'm impressed with what the Opal C1 delivers, but some of its most interesting features aren't available yet, like gesture control. The company wants you to be able to drop out of calls simply by holding up the peace sign in front of the camera. Opal also thinks it'll be possible for the C1's microphones to listen for speech patterns like uh and um that you wanna rely on less often and provide feedback after your meeting. These features seem fun, but I'm a little skeptical that they'll work as well as it sounds on paper. Opal is showing that software can take webcams to greater heights, even higher than the company's original ambitions, and that's cool. But the C1's $300 price is more than double what a lot of typical webcams cost, and it doesn't end there. The Opal C1 includes access to its growing suite of software tools for early adopters, but at some point, it'll begin charging $4 a month for some features. A subscription plan probably isn't what most people have in mind when they purchase a webcam, but the Opal C1 isn't your average webcam. If you have a bigger budget and want the absolute best video quality, the next step beyond a C1 is a DSLR. And considering that these can cost more than $1,000, I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you have at least a budding passion for photography. I bought this Olympus at the beginning of the pandemic for about 500 bucks, including the lens. So it is possible to get a webcam ready camera without completely breaking the bank. But here's the thing, even after your big investment, you'll likely need to wrestle with a few cables and dongles and mounts, a power supply, and maybe even a new microphone. You'll also need to become an expert of your camera settings to get your setup just right. Some people may like this challenge, and if that's you, go for it. The results might be worth it. Several Verge staffers swear by this method, or they're just trying to get the most out of their indulgences. Either way, they look great, except for when their cameras overheat. If you have a budget of $200 or less, I recommend checking out our buying guide, where I've compared a handful of webcams in different price ranges to see what's actually worth buying. We've linked that in the description below, and we'll be updating it with more 2022 models as they release. One of my favorites from that list is Elgato's Facecam. It sells for 200 bucks and sometimes a little lower, and it's just a webcam that's great at the basics. It supports 1080p resolution at up to 60 frames per second, it has a customizable field of view, and it offers a plethora of other settings in Elgato's PC app. It fits in with the rest of Elgato's streamer-focused gear. To that end, the Facecam has a heat sink to keep its internals cool during marathon streams. Most importantly, if you have decent lighting, the face cam produces a clean image that'll be a leap over what a laptop webcam or even many dedicated webcams can deliver. Though compared to the Opal C1's video fidelity, it comes in a rather distant second place and it lacks a built-in microphone, so you'll need to provide one of your own. Okay, despite saving this for last, I've been most excited to tell you that there are ways to get a good webcam without buying one. 
No, it doesn't involve theft. A few app developers out there have figured out low cost or no cost solutions for turning your smartphone into a webcam. And even some slightly older phones out there can deliver better image quality than many webcams. The app that I've used the most is called DroidCam, and it works with Android and iOS with Windows PCs. The free version of the app gives you all of the essentials to get started, but the paid version comes with extra features, like boosting the resolution, letting you rotate the picture, or zooming in. This could be a great option for you, even if the phone you have might not be all that useful otherwise. Another option if you have an iPhone is Elgato's Epoch Cam. It lets you easily blur your background, or superimpose yourself onto a different background with its chroma key feature. This will make it useful for creators, or for people who just want to keep themselves entertained by imposing themselves onto a pizza or something. The paid version includes support for 1080p HDR footage, video filters, and more. Outside of a webcam specs and features, one thing I like to have is the option to mount it to a tripod. On my desk, I use this Gorillapod, which I like because I can stand it upright or wrap it around a monitor arm. And if you don't have natural lighting to light your face, it'd be a good idea to invest in a small key light to stay well lit. I never thought that I'd become so invested in webcams, but they're so important to so many people. Now I've gone over just a few options to step up your webcam game, and whichever route you choose, I hope you get the results you're looking for. By the way, I brought a power bank and a USB cable if we wanna do like a fun, like, you know, <laughs> underlit. Do you have a cool webcam rig at home? Let us know about it in the comments below. And thanks for watching.